Hi, I'm Jessa. And I'm Alex. And this is Jessa and Alex Watch. Bridgerton, season three, episode six, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is the name of the book. Oh, cute. Yeah. Cutie pootie. Okay, well, romancing him, boys down bad. Right. We don't need to romance him. It's done. Set. Although maybe there's a reveal that requires some romance. Maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe. Yeah. So that was the big thing in the last episode. Cressida claimed to be Lady W. And I just think, girl, you don't have the follow through for that. Like, did you think about what that was going to entail? Like, that's actually going to ruin your reputation. Like, you don't have any of the benefits right. that they were talking about. Right. So I'm confused at that choice. Right. And I was really rooting for Eloise not to be right about your schemes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In other news, Eloise is kind of getting on our nerves. She's going to need to wrap this whole situation up real quick. Real fast. I, it's, it's one of those things where it's like either get over it or forget that she existed you know? Yeah. Like either move on or move past it. Yeah, exactly. Like if I think her behavior towards you was friendship ending, like if you, if you want the friendship to end, I think that's totally valid. Right. But then you just completely ignore her. Exactly. You know, like she's not in your business. Right. But she's like occupying your every thought. Yes. Basically you're just walking around whining for attention from Penelope right now. And it's really annoying. So yeah. also your little toast. Come on, Eloise. Behave. And we are big Eloise fans. I she's easily my favorite character. Get it together. Okay. We support your rights and her wrongs. But I wish I didn't have to watch her wrongs so much. I wish you would get back to your rights. Yeah, because right now you're testing us. And please just go kiss a woman. I feel like you've got a lot of pent up. <sighs> yes, God, stuff. there's so much. There's a lot going on. So yeah. honestly, I get it. I get it, Eloise. I get it. Being a baby gay is hard. Mm -hmm. Not knowing all this situation. You're in a terrible situation. Right. Like, you have to wear all those powder blue dresses. I know that can't be to your taste. What if her favorite color is yellow? uh, Too bad. (laughs) Also, um, Anthony and Kate are simultaneously the most annoying couple ever and deeply funny to watch. So I absolutely love them. (laughs) No notes. (laughs) I really, I tried to open my mouth about them at the beginning of last yeah. episode and then I like quickly shut it. I was like, you know what? Actually, I needed that. Yeah. yeah. I needed them. I needed and Anthony's high like, strung. Wrapped around her. She was fully dressed laying in bed so that he could be wrapped around her. The, for me, it's the casual way he got that pillow and put it on her stomach so he could lay down like he did it every single morning, which you know he does. Yeah. Like I, she's like, babe, I have work, babe. I fear for this baby. <laughs> I fear. Let's hope it's a boy, because if it's a girl, she's gonna be the most micromanaged. <laughs> like I don't think he can handle having two children. Oh my god. Whoa. He'll have to like quit all of his other work just to focus on being a dad. Well, yeah. He's already doing that. He's like, what if we laid in bed and never went away? You're with child. <laughs> Oh, Kill Martin and Francesca have never done anything wrong so in their sweet. entire life. And they're them. so sweet and it's perfectly cast and they're doing nothing wrong. The way that he was bombing at, at small talk and her entire family was like. The way they don't love <laughs> And her. she was just glowing at him like he's the most smartest, beautiful, incredibest man I've ever seen. <laughs> she said. Like they already live together. Yeah. She said, tell them the story about the boots. <laughs> yeah. Kill. Yeah. I think she is a genius. I cannot wait for her next issue. <laughs> oh, okay. With that close up extra, good for you. A fraud, a succubus of the first water. Oh. Uh- Pen. Colin. Oh my God. You well. I've been worried. She's wearing Bridger Chimpler. Subtle. <laughs> You've never touched those flowers in your life. I cannot speak about it now. But I certainly did not change because of anything you did. <laughs> Me as a mother, honestly, I can't even make fun of her. I'd be like, <laughs> I'm 
I must know the tea of my child uh, marriage. Like, it's just like Cressida to take that which is not hers. Mm. Do you have your listening ears on, Colin? Imagine Lady Wasudan might be more clever, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> the way she said yes. The jeweler has just finished setting it. Oh, it's actually really oh that's pretty. beautiful. What was all this ink? Have you been writing? Oh, yes, um, letters to, uh, to share our happy news. Maybe you're making it worse. Good day, Miss Featherington. For now. She's so little, and then every time they're in a shot together, it's so obvious that she's standing in, like, four apple boxes. Yes! <laughs> mom is so nervous, and you know what? So am I. Yeah. I think perhaps mom knows she's Lady Whistledown. It's my new theory. Hmm. Although I think she would have asked for money if oh, she Oh, yeah, she that's Whistledown. true. I promised Lord Greer Good a debutante bride, God. not a gossip writer. He has rescinded his offer of marriage. Truly. Is it because he saw that dress? <laughs> I am sending you to live with your Aunt Jo. <gasps> Josephine Mark. That's a great idea. You can write gossip about the sheep. Okay. All right. She actually might find someone she loves in Wales, TBH. I know my daughter. Lady Whistledown is an astute writer. You have <laughs> many gifts, but cleverness is not amongst them. Wow. When your mom calls you dumb to your face. Miss Cressida Cowper, you are summoned to the palace at the behest of Her Majesty the Queen. You're really doing the most. You must draw attention to yourselves, and in the best way possible, by throwing a ball. This is her answer to everything. You must throw a ball. I mean, she's not wrong. Um... You should love a ball. It's just a bigger pub. We do have a way with entertaining. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Danbury said, unfortunately, Francesca wasn't the, uh, the game uh, I wanted to play yeah, this yeah, season. Yeah. Could have sent a footman to fetch this, could I not? <laughs> but then I would not have been able to see you again. Okay, Riz. Quite a night, was it not? <laughs> How are you faring? Um... Besides a bit of a headache, I am well. <laughs> Ladies Bridgerton did serve too much alcohol. My sister was the first born. But you were the first boy. Would have never guessed Lady Danbury was the oldest daughter. You love the pink I love the color pinks. Mm. I like the chocolate macarons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that he plays with the little ones. Yeah, he's so cute with the kids. What? I like the chocolate ones as well. I have not had but them. I <laughs> there is no time like the present. Your family is clearly occupied. Her coaching him to propose. Oh, I do not believe they will hear me. I absolutely have what? Excuse me? I have been taken ill of the plague. <laughs> family! <laughs> Thank you. She's the most precious thing I've ever seen in my whole life. You're like, wait. <laughs> we are to marry. Congratulations. Guys! Be better! I know, we saw <laughs> we saw the um, Penelope call an announcement right. within this same season. Yes. I'm so pleased. You make a beautiful pair. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> we must go to the Modisa day for your dress. Are we feeling a little bit silly, Eloise? In the presence of real love? Did you know she was Lady Whistledown? Uh, you sp spoke with Penelope this morning. She is devastated about Miss Cowper coming forward. <sighs> Tell me, you did not know. I did not know that Cressida Cowper was Lady Whistledown. The friendship was already souring, but this caper may be the final straw. Souring because you couldn't be bothered to think about- Because you're a bad friend. Ugh. And honestly, not to be, you know, this is what Penn said about you last season.
you have to be the main character in the friendship. Mm. <laughs> this is like when you have like 14 drafts of a text. <laughs> she's, she's testing it out in her notes out. <laughs> For whatever reason, my brother truly believes he loves you. You don't mean. Oh, as harebrained as her display at last night was, Cressida has done you a favor. <laughs> Your name is about to be Bridgerton. You cannot be both. She can if she wants. I think that's really gross of you, Eloise, to be like, your identity must be subsumed in my family's identity. But it's just gossip. Let it go. Hmm. She's a writer, Eloise. <sighs> Somebody's gonna need her own season to win me back over, cause... Oh no. Her Majesty will see you now. It's the ugliest thing I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. This is the young lady claiming to be Lady Whistledown. Yes, Your Majesty. Yeah. <laughs> and why have you come forward now? It's concave. <laughs> yeah. I should like to claim my reward. Your Majesty. A measly 5,000 pounds should be nothing to the great Lady Whistledown. A great point. I will give you your reward yeah. as soon as you give me your latest issue. The one that should have been published this morning. I know Lady Whistledown as well as I know myself. No, you don't. The greatest <laughs> strength uh. is that she is an observer. Say something witty. Go. I observe. Uh -oh. Unless you can print a convincing issue. Get to scribbling. Cressida, I forbid you from attempting to publish. <laughs> okay, mom. I think my mother might fight for us a chance never to be hostess. We should talk about announcing your betrothal uh, as far as the Queen In is fact, we have discussed this. We do not wish to wait that long. We should like to start setting up a home together. We think speaking to the Queen may be the wisest decision. They're actually like the only Bridgerton couple that said, actually, we value communication. We've talked to each other. I know. We would we like know what you we want. to speak to the Queen. Real. <laughs> Your besties, right? I love Francesca so much. She's a real fun character. Yeah. I did not get guilt flowers when I was wed. That's because you were not marrying a man with unlimited funds. <laughs> I will carry you, my love. No, oh, I'd rather a guilt carriage. <laughs> Penelope. <laughs> <laughs> Your duty is to make Mr. Bridgerton feel as if he is the most important person in the world, to cater entirely to your husband. His dreams, his wishes. Fine. At least in the beginning. <laughs> there we go. What about my dreams? What about what I want? What dreams? What about me? She said, we are family, like a giant tree. Sometimes what you wish for may come yeah, true. That's the Bridgertons. Yeah, just collecting. Yes. People like Weasley's. Yes. Francesca said, oh, no, thank you. Thanks. But no, thanks. <laughs> I will be getting out of this house as soon as possible. We'll be starting our own home. <laughs> And my greatest wish has always been for you three to do better than I did. The plight of a parent. Mm. You're lucky, Penelope. Do not take that for granted. Sacrificing yourself, who you are, for a love match is not a love match. Yeah. I'm hosting a dinner party later this week for you and me and my dear friend Paul. My dear friend Paul, huh? Well, the pleasure is mine. These boys did not make this man hang out with them. 
time. Another. At this rate, you'll have us wish you close the club every week. Sadly, this is the very last bottle. <laughs> Hopefully, they'll all talk and he doesn't have to say anything. Yeah. He's going to be so exhausted. He'll sleep for a week. No, oh. please do not start saying sentimental things about us. I was going to say I'm the most fortunate amongst us because I have spotted another bottle. <laughs> Aw, he's good with the boys. <laughs> he's very prepared. Yeah, Francesca has taught him well. Yeah. He fully scoped that whole room in the first three minutes of that conversation. Yeah. He yes. was ready. He's like, and this is what I'll say, and it'll fix them all. <laughs> I can always talk about that lamp over there because it reminds me of one I saw somewhere else. <laughs> right. This is the first time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment, oh boy. ye are to declare it. <laughs> that was cute. Mr. Bridgerton and Miss Featherington shall be married here in three weeks time it's cool of them to show reading of the bands that doesn't turn Today, up a lot I in also <laughs> publish the bands for lord charles cho and miss emma kenworthy wait that's not one of colin's horrible friends is it no lord cho and miss kenworthy shall be married here in two weeks time well your congregation is flourishing in fact, there's something I've been meaning to tell you for a very long time. That I have loved you since the moment we met. Remember how in season two, mm -hmm. it got dragged out so much between Anthony and Kate to where it kind of got annoying at some point? We're here. I loved you in secret. I just think it's so much more interesting to watch him yeah deal with the fallout and watch her deal with the fallout than it is to watch her not tell him because she's not told him for two and a half seasons already right there is nothing in the world that makes me happier than being with you okay pen were you ever punished as a child <laughs> I... what <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 Miss Pen. Eloise, I've slipped out. Please do not tell anyone I'm here. I would think you would relish the attention. I do not come forward for attention. Why then? Perhaps because... I know you didn't hear because you have been listening to me. My parents are arranging my marriage to an old man. Cressida, do you not remember what was written about me last year? What you wrote in Whistledown? Forgive me, I... I do not know why I wrote it, really. <laughs> and I cannot be your friend any longer. I am sorry. Is this truly about Whistledown? No. Nope. It's no wonder Penelope abandoned you. Ooh. Give it to her. She deserves it. All you ever do is talk. You are clearly just envious that I've made something of myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perhaps I am envious of Whistledown. It's mm. quite a feat. Okay. I almost understand why one might be driven to write it. But you didn't, actually. At Congratulations least. on your hard-earned success. You didn't create anything, so. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. If we're not going the gay route, whatever. But her being jealous of Penelope because Penelope was supposed to be her wallflower friend and she was able to do everything Eloise wasn't able to do. That makes sense. I'm simply worried if the queen presses too much, then she may Look, see that you The queen is not to... splitting them up, okay? They don't care what the queen thinks. No. But they do if the queen suspects them. She may feel emboldened to oppose their match. Guys, this isn't a conflict. <laughs> In a way. Oh. oh no, don't be sad. That really hurts my feelings. I didn't know she knew about our jokes about her family not knowing who she is. That's that's really devastating and I'm so sad about it. No. He will accept all of you. Or none of you, Penelope Featherington. 
Are you kidding? You may not. Do not! <gasps> wow. Blasphemous. You cannot Amy March yourself, I, Penelope. I was going to say, you are your own Amy March right now. For a man. <laughs> right. In June, at least, Amy and Joe, it was a fight between women. I want to be a background actor on this show. Me too. <laughs> I, just, I just want to polish a cup and raise it to the, to the light a lot. Let us plan the greatest wedding Mayfair has ever seen. Mm, but it's music to my ears. Now, for the cake. But... Your mother's going to kill you. <laughs> She's so happy for you. She's said, you're living my dream. Yeah. Penelope, that column's your life's work. I cannot continue writing. She needed another artist. I found a love match, Genevieve. I did not wish to take that for granted. <laughs> my mama has sent me for some fabric samples. For my wedding dress. <laughs> there is no desk in my room. I'm writing a whistle down. Good. Five thousand pounds may not be much to live on, but as a dowry, it may be enough to help lure you a husband from the continent or the countryside. Literally, what happened to Bond guy? Well, he went on his little trip. For three years. I thought there was more time. They said we hired him for four episodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are standing to recite. Dear reader, it is I, Lady Whistledown. Because that's how she starts Today things. I bring you much gossip from about the many lands. <laughs> Near and far, far and wide. Is that all? So far? Oh, Bubby. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> I'm frightened. Do you write or draw or paint? No. I spiraled out last season for no good reason. I fully forgot that. Dance sometimes <laughs> at parties. Oh. The music is quite pleasant tonight, is it not? She wants to bond with her mom so bad on this wedding thing. Ah, Marcus. Marcus. <laughs> A few more friends I should like you oh to meet. Word. Why is she doing this? You don't need... Ladies, She's evening. her and Eloise. They're like... My best friend. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows a baby can push water up into one's eyes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh they're so good. They are so, oh. <laughs> I take comfort in knowing that if we no longer have your club, you shall at least host the season's really most exquisite- Colin and Penelope to have scenes together. This way, incredible. She's here. It's very Queen of Hearts. Mm -hmm. As I assumed, lackluster at best. Oh, that's so rude. But does the Queen not love a little chaos? Yes, but it is important that we find her in good humor. Granny, you're just gonna have to do it yourself, babe. But I do not wish to ruin things for you. How would you ruin things? Do you not think how much would cheer her? I am going to look at the very fine wainscoting. <laughs> Bless him. You have been perfunctory in your support. Not every attachment must be dramatic and hard fought. What John and I have is easy and I love him, Mama. Even if it is not the love that you want for me. It's funny, we made so many jokes about them not knowing who Francesca is, but that's literally the plot. But it is not for you to go after my friend. You are not the only one who cares for Lady Bridget. Must you take everything from me? <laughs> Nobody likes, somebody doesn't like to share her toys. Is this about father? Oh, it is about many a thing. It I had a chance of happiness. And you took it from me. 
Do you think I do not know that it was you who betrayed me to our father? I heard him thank you. Soma. 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 You think you can call me by my born name and right the wrong? Oh! Interesting. Um, that was work on every widow in the town, but I am unmoved. Now, if you will excuse me. No, that's um a legitimate grievance. Although, I mean, there's clearly more to the story, but yeah, her accent coming out was really interesting. So no. cool. Uh, I love when people make choices I, like I that. I have a choice. <laughs> Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. I see. She wanted to play tennis. tennis. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I've got a great chat for us to go to. It's a real good shout. Shall we get three tickets to challenges? <laughs> Would you perhaps like to join us? Upstairs. I, uh, I've forgotten. I'm supposed to be somewhere. Uh, forgive me. Stop it. Literally? What? This is Lady Whistledown. The my friend texted me the other day and was like, I was watching part two of Bridgerton and I wanted to text you because the scene where Cressida comes in in the red dress reminded me of Scarlett O'Hara. And I was like, haven't watched it yet, but you're correct, Emily. It is a very Scarlett moment. <laughs> let us squirm a little. I will not let her ruin our night. Um, okay, well, Thanks. Okay, this cut is kind of giving, though. Yeah, it this is. This is the best she's looked all Absolutely. season. Like, this full it's Wicked crazy. Witch thing is really good, actually. Yeah. Oh. Oh, apologies. Pen? If you will, before you sell into a bookseller, I do so enjoy writing. Uh, letters and what have you. <laughs> oh! Uh, forgive me. <laughs> It seems the Queen has summoned Miss Cowper. It may finally be time for Lady Whistledown to meet her consequences. I simply wanted to give you a gift. <laughs> Did her mom <laughs> do her homework for her? Dearest gentle read. So short. It is said that there is no rest for the wicked. This. I am back and shall return soon enough with a full issue. You may now know my name, but have no doubt. It really was mommy. Yours truly, Lady Whistledown. Or forever now, Cresta Cowper. <laughs> okay, but now you have to deliver still, babe. Mom said I'm into it now, actually. Cressida can do the scoping and mom can write it down. Then we might discuss your reward. What did you want to do in unmasking Whistledown? What was your plot, Queen? I convinced you to let her take Whistledown's name and now she has somehow written something coherent. Not to mention puppies. We have created somehow. a monster. <laughs> Whistledown is power. Three misses. Voiced upon the marriage market like sorrowful sours by their tasteless, tactless mama. The alliteration was a little overdone, I admit, but please let me use it now to do some good. Preston's not a villain. I, yeah, and I feel like this has nothing to do with her one paragraph being like, I'm back. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're both um, experiencing feelings differently and blaming Cressida, and it's just not her fault. Yeah. That was a really interesting scene and a growth mo moment for Penn. Apologies for the late order. There's been 
some confusion with I this delivery. Jesus. It's not even her accent. Yeah. Though. Anything for Lady Whistledown? Anything for West of Whistledown? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You are Lady Whistledown. Well. Little red in a Bridgerton blue hood. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh me, oh my. We are in trouble. We got our wish. Colin finally knows that Penelope is Lady Whistledown. All right. Yes. I'm glad we'll have two whole episodes to process that. Yeah. I have two hesitancies okay. right now. Okay. One, you made this point. They don't talk to each other, yeah. Penn and Colin. Yeah. So I would love in the next two episodes to really see them now that they finally have conflict. I, mm-hmm. I understand that it's hard to write a friends to lovers. Yeah. I actually did ship them in the first four episodes. These two kind of feel a little like filler for their relationship because mm-hmm. it stands still. Like, because technically a friends to lovers is finished when they get together, right? right? Because right. the whole thing is that it's pining. Yeah. So, but now we've entered new conflict. And so I'll probably refine yeah. my love for it. And once he really knows her, because I don't feel he knows the real pen, because pen is nothing without her, like, I'm Lady Whistle. Exactly. And I did love that story for her, her yeah. personal yeah. growth moment of being like, okay, well, I got the boy I loved. So my life will be better now. This is everything I've wanted. And it's actually like, a great story of actually, no, you and your singlehood found this gorgeous life for yourself right. and you really found yourself. Yeah. You're like almost like you're too old now to marry and let him be your whole life. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really fun story. And it's un it's it's very much the first stage of Kate, right? Mm. Like Kate already knew herself yeah. when she gets with Anthony, which is like a fun story. And then Daphne doesn't stand up for herself until after she's married. She doesn't find herself until after she's married. And then we have Penn who like found herself and didn't realize it. Yeah. Mm, That's very true. There's this like thing in theater or maybe it was just in my theater education in college. It's like um, a good play is always like uh, the character getting what they want, but not in the way they expected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like that's Penelope's whole yeah. plot in this season. She got what she wanted, but it didn't feel the way she expected right. it to. Yeah. You know, um, I'm glad uh, Pen and Eloise are like joining together again. I hate that it's anti Cressida. It, do- it doesn't seem motivated. It doesn't seem motivated. It seems like they're both not girls' girls, which, hi, That's you guys are, like, our two feminist characters. Yeah. So why are you guys, like, being, like, nasty to Cressida? Right. Especially since, like, I feel like that scene would have felt so much more motivated to me if that little bulletin that Cressida released actually had any gossip in it mm-hmm. or, like, threatened the Bridgertons or anything yeah. whatsoever because all it said was I'm back definitely gonna give you some more gossip right I mean Eloise did get her ass handed to her like Cressida was standing on business yes she said maybe it's because you never stopped talking that she dumped your ass and maybe she should have yeah and I'll do it too yeah so, like, I get why Eloise is mad because Eloise doesn't like to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, I think Penn is being a little bit nasty. Mm-hmm. Don't know that. And then my other concern, I know that went on really long. We forgot there was two. This one's, like, shorter because I'm. I, they haven't resolved it yet. But the Benedict situation for me is feeling a little, like giving me a pride collection at target it's like yeah sure if i'm running last minute to pride it's nice that i can go somewhere to get a rainbow however why if you're going to do the one like queer uh, ship or whatever in the season are you did we watch 
him romance a woman for the whole mm-hmm. season to get there yeah like why didn't we begin with the love story because now I just feel like you brought in a man prop to be like here gay right yeah I that's like you've been saying about what's her face all season that's clearly not Benedict's one true love so it doesn't matter it's just to be like yeah we heard you Benedict's bye actually and I love a bi boy, please. I love a bi boy. <laughs> right. But it's just frustrating. It just conti- they just they just continue to be like drowning with that character. Yeah, I don't understand what they're doing there. But anyway, I'm, maybe it'll go somewhere. I'm holding. Holding for better. <laughs> but that's how I'm feeling right now. Yeah. It's June. Tis my privilege. <laughs> Once again. Um Francesca and uh what's his first name? John. John can do absolutely no wrong i'm so so glad francesca stood up for herself that it really really broke my heart like i was about to cry like her watching colin and pen because we even said it in the episode like you guys have to be happier about this right we just saw another couple get engaged in your family and we were just hoping she didn't notice but she, right of course she notices right yeah of course she feels that separation yeah. from them. that's horrible it is yeah and she does love him you know why because she's the first person she's ever met in her entire life that understands her right and who isn't just like oh yeah the fifth or fourth or third or sixth bridgerton right like, i don't know what her order is fifth he said out of everyone in this room, out of all the shiny, beautiful things that I could have been looking at, I noticed you. Yeah. But I didn't notice when there was mud on my own boots. That's beautiful. Yeah. I um I loved when Francesca said to Violet, like, not all love has to be dramatic and hard fought. It was very Meg March of her. <laughs> well, his name is John, too. That's I was true. like... I feel like I've said this monologue. (laughs) Yeah, especially the Greta Gerwig because there's that lovely scene between Joe and Meg when Joe's like, um, you'll care about him now, but it's fleeting and will be interesting (laughs) forever. And then um, Meg comes back with like, just because my dreams are different than yours, it doesn't mean that my dreams aren't valid, which is, which is beautiful yeah and it it it, she is the quiet sister and she does understand that she's never going to be a joe and she's never going to be an amy that's never been her thing she never wanted that yeah and she can love joe and still know that yes but all she wants she knows her mom she knows we're in francesca now this is how (laughs) my brain works keep up Uh, (laughs) francesca knows her mom she knows her sister she knows her brothers and she understands that she's different from, right. from them. And she loves that about them. Yeah. But all she wants is for them to love her right. for being different. Without needing her to be outgoing or splashy. Or changing or, her. Yeah. Like all of the shame on them for all of their being like, oh, we really hoped we'd, um, she'd marry someone that made her fit in more with us. Yeah. Like that's shitty. Yeah. All right. We're going to keep going. Um, but if you have any thoughts that you would like to share, please feel free to share them down below. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, we would love if you would do that. Give this video a like, share it with your friends, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.